new legislation not only honoring the life of a 12-year-old Texas girl, some say it could also prevent another tragic death. The murder of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungary sent shockwaves across the country after her body was found, brutally beaten near a creek back in June. The two prime suspects were migrants here illegally, and the crime sparked criticism of the crisis at the southern border. The Justice for Jocelyn bill introduced by Senator Ted Cruz aims to make it harder for migrants to be released into the country after they are processed at the southern border. Joining us with more information on the bill is News Nation's Ali Bradley. Ali, what are we hearing about this? Yeah, hey, Natasha. So as you mentioned, the two suspects here in the killing of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungary are two men here illegally from Venezuela who crossed earlier this year in the El Paso sector. Now, they were apprehended by Border Patrol and enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. One of the suspects was actually wearing an ICE ankle monitor at the time of Jocelyn's killing. So today, Senator Ted Cruz and Representative Troy Nels, alongside the family of Jocelyn Nungary, discussed the Justice for Jocelyn Act. Alexis, Jocelyn's mother, urged support for the legislation. All I have now left is to fight, to fight for Jocelyn, to fight for justice. And that is why I'm here today, because I refuse to let Jocelyn's memory fade, and I refuse to let her voice go unheard. What is so infuriating about Jocelyn's murder is it didn't have to happen. It was utterly and completely preventable. These two Venezuelan illegal immigrants were in custody. They were in federal custody. All the administration had to do was follow the law, follow the law and put them on a plane and fly them back to Venezuela. Okay, so Senator Cruz says that 3,000 detention beds were available, but were left empty. This proposed legislation will crack down on ATD. It would require every ICE detention bed be filled, and if they are filled, it would require the DHS secretary to make every attempt to keep illegal immigrants in custody while they are going through that adjudication process. Now, if someone has to be released into the ATD program, this legislation mandates that they would be subject to continuous 24-7 GPS monitoring until either their removal from the country or the completion of their immigrant proceedings. Now, this legislation also empowers immigration officials to deport individuals immediately if that is the necessary step there, Natasha. Now, uh, Congressman Troy Nels co-sponsored this legislation. He says that he has reached out to DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas multiple times, at least three times, and he has not heard anything back. Natasha. And Ali, what do the current alternatives to detention program look like? Yeah, it's really interesting here because this is a program that's been going on for a long time. It goes on under just about every administration. And right now what they're doing is sources within DHS tell us that they are actually transitioning this program from the ankle monitors into using a phone app and a smartwatch with a tamper-proof band on it. So we've seen the data, we've seen the figures and analyzed it. What we can tell you here is that there are at least 175,000 migrants currently enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program, but only 17,000 of them actually have a GPS ankle monitor. The remainder have that phone app or that smartwatch that I was talking about. Sources telling us that can be cut off just like GPS monitors, adding that they don't think it's feasible to have millions of people monitoring under the program like the senator is suggesting. Now, it's also important to remember one of the suspects here did cut off their ankle monitor days after Jocelyn was killed. Now, the former acting ICE director Ron Vitello telling News Nation's Marty Hughes that a big issue with priority prioritizing who gets a bed and ice uh, and who doesn't. That is one of the issues that they're facing. If they can't be removed to Venezuela, for example, they likely wouldn't get a bed. Vitello says this is a matter of public safety. They should be held regardless of where they are from. Now, the left is pointing to the countries of origin, right, that Venezuela, uh, they don't share their criminal databases, so we're not going to know who these individuals are. So that is an issue that they're bringing up. But a big issue, too, we're talking about those deportation flights. Natasha, Venezuela hasn't accepted any back since January. When we talked with uh, Vice President nominee J.D. Vance yesterday. He said in order to fix that situation where they're not taking those flights back, he and President Trump, they would go after their economy. They would destroy economies for people who aren't playing ball with the United States. Natasha.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.